Um, and all, all of these things are important uh, revenue streams because they, they're, they're needed to uh, fund future developments. Um, and uh, you know, we've, we've got, uh, obviously, Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, we've got the Merlin engine, which is uh, about to go through its uh, fourth iteration with the Merlin 1D. Um, and it's, it's the, the highest uh, efficiency hydrocarbon, a US hydrocarbon engine ever to see flight. Um, and then we, uh, we, we, we'll probably be able, be able to announce, maybe late this year or early next year, uh, a, a new engine development that we're going to do, which is uh, going to be very exciting. Um, and that, that, that'll be uh, a super high efficiency stage combustion engine. Um, and uh, we want to make sure we have all our ducks in a row before we announce, announce that development, but I think that's going to be very exciting. Um, and, and also, it's, it's something like that's very important for, um, you know, if, if, you, if you want to take significant amounts of, of uh, cargo and people to, to Mars. Because um, I think ultimately, the, the, the thing that is super important um, in, in the grand scale of history is, um, are we on a path to becoming a multi-planet species or not? Um, and, and if we're not, well, th that's, that's not a very bright future. You know, we'll simply be hanging out on Earth until some eventual calamity claims us. Um, so so that, that, that's really the important thing. And um, so that, that's kind of, you know, how I'm judging SpaceX. Like, are we, are we helping move things in that direction? Um, and in order to have a self-sustaining civilization on uh, Mars, you have to be able to transport hundreds of, probably hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people, and, and millions of tons of cargo. Um, so, so clearly, very significant breakthroughs are, are needed. Um, and I, I, th I think the, the, the most fundamental breakthrough uh, is a rapidly and fully reusable uh, rocket. Um, and I, those are important qualifiers. Uh, it doesn't help if it's partially reusable, and it doesn't help if it's not rapidly reusable. Um, because um, if you think of any other mode of transport, like uh, really any, any mode of transport, from bicycles, cars, planes, boats, they're all rapidly and completely reusable. I mean, apart from occasional maintenance items. So, um, and, and that, that's why they, they function well. Um, you know, if, if you had a car, if you had a car where you had to, say, you know, replace the tires on every trip, or uh, could, you could only use it once a week. Uh, that wouldn't be a very good car, uh, or plane, or anything. Um, so it's got to be fully and rapidly reusable. Uh, just like when, you know, when the Wright brothers invented, uh, created the airplane, they actually they didn't, they didn't invent something that fl flew. They, invent, they invented controlled powered flight. That, that was really, those, those were really what, what made an airplane very useful. Um, and, uh, so, so that, that's, um, that's something that either SpaceX or, or some, some organization has to invent. I think that's a critical element uh, in um, revolutionizing uh, space. Um, and if you look at, say the, say, the Falcon 9, the cost of propellant on Falcon 9 is about 0.3% of the cost of, of the mission. So you know, the, that means if, if we could fully reuse the, the vehicle, I mean, it's at least a two order of magnitude increase in the uh, cost efficiency of the, of the flight. Um, you know, or, or thought of another way, um, you know, it's one thing to ask for, say, 0.3% of, of uh, the GDP to establish life on another planet. Um, it is another thing to ask for 100% of the GDP. That it will simply not occur. Uh, people need food and think, you know, basic stuff like that. So, um, that, that's something that I think is also an important uh, long-term thing that has to occur. Um, and, and in that regard, I'm, I'm a fan of uh, vertical takeoff and landing um, because um, obviously if you're gonna go to, to other places in the solar system, um, you know, there's, there's no air on the moon and there's no runways. So wings are not a great idea. Um, and um, yeah, so, so those are sort of the things that we, we hope to do in, in, in the future. Um, and uh, we're, we're hiring uh, a lot of people. Uh, last year, we, we grew by 50% in, in personnel. Uh, we're continuing to grow rapidly this year. So we're now about 1,500 people. Um, and uh, yeah, and 
we have significant operations in Florida, Texas, and California, um, and in the DC, uh, Virginia area. So um, we're always looking for great talent. So if, if anyone's interested in joining SpaceX, please send us a resume. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, let's see, I think, I think with that, um, I'd be happy to open the floor to any questions you have. Uh, sure. Uh, so the question is, do, do, we, do we have an architecture planned out for Mars trips? Um, I, we, we do. I wouldn't say it is fleshed out to a detailed level, um, but the, we know what the ingredients are, um, you know, which is a vehicle that's capable of, of delivering substantial mass to the surface of Mars and, and then uh, re re returning to Earth as well. Um, and, um, but I think we'll take this in steps. Uh, certainly something like uh, Falcon Heavy could deliver you know, decent payload to the surface of Mars. Uh, it, it's sort of on the order of 12 to 15 metric tons. Um, so that, that's not bad. I, I think you probably want a vehicle that can deliver something on the order of 50 metric tons, you know, um, and be able to do that in a fully reusable um, manner. Th 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 then, then the whole equation works. Um, and there's more than one way to skin that cat. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah that, that's, that's what I think. Yes, I have a question uh, on the uh, reusable vehicle that you talked about. I, I've seen a, a lot of studies of these vehicles, and the key to, to making it work seems to be to get on the order of two or 300 missions a year to keep the cost down. What do you see as the the commercial drive that will, will result in the need for two or 300 launches a year? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's always a tough question to answer. And, and I suspect in the early days of, of airplanes, people didn't imagine that there would be this many airplane trips. But um, I, I think the biggest driver for that is, is really a base on Mars or you know, potentially a base on the moon. Um, but I don't think there's really a need for that many satellites, uh, for example. Um, and um, I, I also don't think it's that there's a rational basis for, like, you know, doing things like mining helium-3 on the moon. And, or really, I, I have a hard time imagining mining anything anywhere and bringing it to Earth. Because um, Earth has got a lot of stuff. <laughs> Earth's crust has got almost every... I mean, Earth is big. <laughs> um, so, but... I do think there is a market for people who would want to move to the moon or move to Mars. And, uh, and, and that, that, I think, is, is, is interesting uh, and, and can, could support a huge number of flights, that, thousands of flights a year. Uh, sure. A uh, question just about uh, our Dragon um, spacecraft and um, w what we're going to do with respect to um, carrying, transporting astronauts and what, whatnot. Um, so the, we actually designed the Falcon 9 and uh, Dragon to um, meet the published uh, Na uh, NASA human rating uh, design guidelines. So, you know, things like so designing to a 1.4 factor of safety instead of a 1.25, um, having a multi uh, being multi-failure toler tolerant, so a, dra drag a Dragon, for example, can lose any two engines uh, at, any, at any time and still be safe uh, with respect to the space station. It uh, can still tra translate and rotate uh, as needed. Um, and um, we actually have a sort of a, a secondary heat shield behind the primary heat shield. Um, the the, the, the um, avionics, all two-failure tolerant, all that sort of stuff. It's, it's got windows. Um, so the question is, well, what doesn't it have? Um, uh, really, the main thing is just the escape system. Um, so, that, so in terms of upgrading it, uh, we need to add a launch escape. Um, and in this, we're taking a, a sort of a, a different path than has been uh, done before, uh, which is to tap the onboard propellant, uh, which is NTOMMH, um, as escape uh, propellant. 
Uh, and because um, you, you either need to maneuver on orbit or you need to escape. You don't need to do both. Um, and this, this makes for a very uh, mass efficient design. Um, <clears throat> it, it, it also means that you can carry um, uh, high velocity escape capability all the way to orbit, uh, as opposed to having to dump a launch tower kind of early on. Um, and, uh, and then uh, a sort of optional bonus is we can use those same engines to land propulsively. Um, now, we're still going to retain um, redundant parachutes on Dragon, so you'll still have redundant um, you know, uh, parachutes. So effectively, you'd have almost four levels of redundancy because um, the, uh, the landing engines are themselves redundant, and then you've got uh, redundant main parachutes. So like four things would have to fail before, actually only on the, yeah, the, if, yeah four, four things in a row would have to fail before, in order for loss of life. Um, but th then the neat thing about that is you could use it to propulsively land in other places like Mars or Moon or somewhere. Um, so I think it's, it's got potential as a generalized science delivery platform uh, for, for other you know, missions in the solar system.